Good evening everyone. Today is the 28th of March. It's Wednesday evening. I hope you're doing well. I've entitled this video One Wife. <laughs> One Wife. You know there's been many times that I have studied biblical history and I've been in a quandary. I'm just glad to know God is sovereign over all things. You know, when God created Adam, he took from Adam a rib and he made one wife. He did not bring Adam two or three or four or five or six wives. And we've often talked about the wife being likened to the church, you know. God would not have brought Adam one or two or three wives, and he doesn't have one or two or three different churches through to one or two or three different religions. He says he's only there's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. John the Baptist lost his head. Why did he lose his head? Because he told... What did he tell the king? He said, this is not right that you're having this woman as your wife. You know? And you know, all the way through the New Testament it talks about adultery and Christ spoke out against adultery. He said from the beginning of creation it was not so. And today we're living in a time where adultery is so present no one will speak out against it. You know, I remember I heard about a pastor who was asked about this problem and he said there's nothing you can do about it. It's, it's so rampant. There's nothing. Well, you can still speak out against adultery and fornication, can't you? Is that legalism to speak out against adultery? Christ and his disciples spoke out against it. You know? And, of course, the Mormon church, I mean, they're well known for having many wives. Polly. Well, they call it. Polygamy. I couldn't remember the name. Polygamy. Meaning many wives. I knew a fellow one time that took a job in Utah as a manager of a grocery store. And he said it took him a little while to get used to it because some of the men had three, four, five wives and they would come into the grocery store and he, he kind of threw him a backwards, you know. If Jesus Christ, who created the whole world, if he'd intended for man to have multiple wives. Now, I know David had multiple wives, and I know Solomon had multiple wives, and I know many of the people in the Old Testament had multiple wives. I know that. You know, I've often asked the question, when did polygamy, when did it stop? <laughs> I'm, sure a little, I'm sure it's still going on in the... Uh, Latter-day Saints Church, the Mormon Church, I'm sure it's still going on. You know, I asked one guy that, and he said, I guess when they made it illegal. <laughs> My point is that God, from the beginning, created one man and one woman. He did not bring Adam multiple wives. Okay? And... He likens the marriage to, as to the bride of Christ, a chastened husband and a chastened wife. 
and he only has one elect. In other words, he doesn't have people that are in the Mormon faith, and he doesn't have people in uh, the Hindu faith, and he doesn't have people in the Muslim faith. He has those who are of followers of Christ and believe in Christ as their only uh, remedy for sin. The moment you start putting your approval on multiple wives and and divorce and remarriage and remarriage and remarriage, marrying and given in marriage, you're going to have problems. And that, you know, <laughs> it's just one of those things, isn't it? A lot of people think taking a stand for the truth is legalism. That's not legalism. Speaking again, out against perversion and homosexuality is not legalism. You know? In, you know, embracing God's law is not legalism. Embracing the Ten Commandments is not legalism. No, we can't perfectly keep the Ten Commandments. And we are under grace. We're not under the law. But we shouldn't be teaching people to break the Ten Commandments, should we? We shouldn't be teaching people to go out and commit adultery. We, should commit, we shouldn't be teaching people to go out and steal and to murder and to cheat on their husbands and their wives and to covet and to bear false witness against their neighbor and to dishonor their parents. Should we be teaching people this? I don't think so. Well, that's what's on my mind tonight, you know. I believe in the sovereignty of God, and I believe in grace. But I don't think that there, I don't think it's wrong to teach uh, morals in a society. I don't think it's Arminian to teach and uphold God's law, you know. If you look up the word antinomian, what does it mean? Do you know what it means? It means released from the obligation of the moral law. Okay? One who holds that under the gospel dispensation of grace, the moral law is of no use or obligation. I don't, I don't believe that. I believe that we are told to, that he's conformed us unto good works. You know, I believe the only way we can keep the law is under grace. That grace enables us to walk in the commandments and statutes of God. That he's ordained us to walk in them. So that's what's on my mind tonight. May the good Lord be with you. God bless.